Hey everybody, it's Damon at California Carnivores again. Today we're going to do a frequently asked questions one, um, specifically on the butterwort. So Daniela is giving me a short list of the questions that you guys ask the most, and we're going to do our best to get to the bottom of them right now. The first one we're going to do is, how do I trim my butterworts? How do I keep them clean looking? So here's one right here. This is a Moctezuma by Gigantea hybrid. And you can see when the leaves are old, they're like old brown papery little guys like that. And there's almost nothing to them. So cleaning them up is really easy. You could gently clean them with scissors, but I think it's a waste of time. I usually will just pull them away like that. And once they're really brown, they'll come right off. You have to be careful with this. If it holds, like see that one, I could pull the whole thing out if I really pull hard on that instead of pulling the leaf out. So leave that one for the next time you come around. And you can just come around and pull off all the brown leaves and you can see they're starting to look better already. But you don't have to be too finicky with it. You can just get in there. See that? I'm gonna have a fistful of old brown leaves and throw those in the compost or garbage. Um, the second question that we get a lot about is specifically with like um, Laoyana, maybe a few of the more Nansis. If you get a ping from us in the springtime, it'll still be in its succulent rosette. Uh, for those of you who don't know, butterworts have a um, cycle where they dry out a little bit in Mexico where they grow in the winter time. And so they make a little succulent rosette of non-carnivorous leaves. Um, and some of those do that more than others. They're gonna start doing that here pretty quick here, but they haven't really started doing it for the most part. So I don't have any to point to, but some of them like Laoyana, um, like this one, just don't come out of there. And so what do you do? Don't worry about it too much, actually. It's not gonna die. This isn't really dormancy. It's still growing. They can even still flower when they're like this. Um, we usually tell people to follow the plant's lead, but in this case, you know, if it still hasn't come out into the sticky carnivorous leaves by, um, let's say like April, May, go ahead and definitely start to keep it wetter because you wanna try and coax that out. If it doesn't happen, like I said, it'll probably just get back on schedule next year. It's really no big deal. So there's that. The, uh, oh, geez. the uh, third question is, um, how come my ping isn't flowering? So there's a size thing with that. They do have to get to a certain size to flower. These are all like flowering size Laoyana right here, except for like those there, you can see, those are not big enough to flower. But when they get about that size, they can flower. So that's a time thing. And they can take a year or two to get there, honestly. Um, they will grow faster and flower more often if you fertilize them. So we don't really use the maxi fertilizer on them here anymore. We use that on everybody else, but I stopped using that a while ago because I was a little bit worried that maybe it was encouraging rot. And so I just backed off. But pings really do love getting fertilized. So, you know, I grew a lot of cactus on the side and recently, maybe like, it's been maybe a couple of years, I guess now, about a year ago, I was thinking about it and I was like, well, these butterworts grow right next to the cactus that I grow. And actually, you know, maybe a cactus fertilizer would be good. So I switched to this um, Schultz cacti and succulent fertilizer. And it's really easy. You can get it at Home Depot or anywhere in the US, order on Amazon, I'm sure. And I just put like 12 to 14 drops in this mist bottle and then I just miss the leaves. And you can do that every two weeks or a month or so. This is a pump sprayer, because obviously I have a lot to do. And then I just get the leaves like that. Actually, I don't know about the spray on that. Maybe like a little less. You can adjust the sprays on these like that. And then just like that. And just wet the leaves. You don't have to worry about getting it on the roots because they're more they're built for absorbing their fertilizer through leaves and they hardly have any roots. But I just spray every single ping in the greenhouse just like that. And believe it or not, just that tiny bit um, really helps them grow a lot faster. And then they're gonna flower a lot like all of them here. And that's the reason we grow butterworts for the most part is all these beautiful different colored flowers. Um, the last question is kind of a tricky one and kind of a bummer. And that is why did my butterwort rot? Um, so one of the things we learned here a long time ago is it's really important not to let the minerals build up in your trays and use only distilled water specifically for these Mexican butterworts. In the wild, they grow in like pure gypsum sometimes. And so, you know, definitely in the wild, they're experiencing minerals, but I think those are just really specific minerals for the most part that they've uh, evolved slowly to be used to. But here, we only use RO water. Even we take our really great, beautiful well water that we use on everything else here, the 60 parts per million, and we actually run that through an RO and use that on the butterworts because when the minerals build up, the rot definitely builds up too. Um, 
Another thing is frequent uh, transplanting. If you transplant them every year, you're way less likely to see that happen. Um, and just so you can see, like it's really hard to know why certain plants rot. Here's a pot of perfectly healthy butterworts amidst all the other ones, and that one's just going. Um, when you see something like that, I'm gonna pull that plant out. There's probably no saving it. There's just nothing on there that could propagate at this point. And so once it's brown like that, just throw it away. It's just gonna slowly rot there and might infect these other ones. And I'll probably transplant all of these and get them out of that soil. Um, because if there's rot here, it could definitely spread to the rest of the pot. Another good trick are leaf cuttings. So the little butterworts, you know, when they're succulent like this, you can take these little succulent leaves and gently pull them away from the side. It definitely takes a little bit of an art and you can kind of hold them down with your other finger. Let me see if I can get these. There we go. And then just pull one off. And if you stick that in the soil like that, particularly in the spring, it'll make a new one or two like that. And so you can make a bunch every single year. And that one's, the little ones are way less likely to rot for some reason, I feel like, when they get big and old and they persist for years and years they can rot, um, but these little ones will just keep new energy and they'll keep growing. And if you have like 10 of them growing all the time, if one rots, it's not a very big deal. And that's how we keep things moving here. There's always a cycle of new ones happening all the time. And that's pretty much all the tricks I know about that. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to contact us on any of our social media platforms. Uh, good luck. And if you want to order some butterworts to try for yourself, they're actually really super easy. They'll grow on any windowsill. So head on over to CaliforniaCarnivores.com. We have a ton of them for sale right now.